Hi, good day. So we proceed to uh, load, the load analysis. So what are the different types of uh, loadings that are to be carried by our uh, structures? So we have uh, one, we have bed loads. So what are the example of bed loads? So usually uh, bed loads are anything that is attached to the structures permanently. Or they, uh, most of the time, they are structural members. If we say uh, structural members, we have uh, columns, beams, roofing, uh, trusses, and so on. So anything that is permanent or fixed in that structures, uh, structure that is, uh, they are the dead loads. Then we have the live loads. So live loads, sometimes uh, they are uh, available in that structure, sometimes they are not, or some. Uh, most of the time, uh, live loads are not permanent in that structure. So, basic example, we have uh, occupants like a uh, human. So, our other, uh, sometimes we may consider live loads, it depends on the purpose of that building. And that is available in our, uh, one of our main uh, source. That is the NSCP 20, I think the latest one is the 2015 version. So anything that is not permanent in that structure, so for example, office workers, so most of the day, uh, most of the time of the day, as office sila, at night, they are not in that uh, building. That is uh, one example of live load. Then we have uh, the third one, is we have the environmental loads. So uh, environmental loads, obviously, these are the loadings uh, from our uh, environment. So one basic example of environmental load, we have the wind load. And then we have the rain. And at present, siguro, one of the most, I think one of the most important, if you are to uh, design a high-rise uh, building, uh, this time we have the earthquake. So most of the time, this uh, earthquake is obviously is, uh, unpredictable. So how to compute for the dead loads, for the live loads, environmental loads that are to be carried by uh, our structure? So our main basis, available ito, a basis natin is we have the NSCP, I think the latest version is uh, 2015. So we have the procedures, standards, specifications, etc. So let's have an example how to compute for dead load and live loads. So let's take uh, example number one. This is an uh, example number one from your uh, module. So we have this uh, setup. For example, we have an I beam or a white flange uh, carrying a slab and a special uh, wall. So we have the details that is a steel beam and a concrete as well. So we have the unit weight of a concrete that is gamma, unit weight that is equal to uh, based on our reference, and I think uh, the same with our NSCP, we have 23.6 kN per cubic uh, meter. And then from also from our uh, reference, the unit weight for steel is equal to uh, 77.3 kilonewtons per cubic uh, meter. So these are available in your uh, module. So we are looking for example for the uniform load. That is the uniform dead load to be carried by uh, the beam. Okay, so we have how to compute for the equivalent uniform dead load. This is the same as the unit weight I multiplied by the area. Or we say summation since we have uh, different types of materials we have the summation of their unit weight qualified uh, by their cross-sectional area. All you have to do is how will you distribute the weight of each material all throughout the length of that uh, beam. Okay? Multiply or get the product of the unit weight and its cross-sectional area. So we have a special case here. The special wall. So we have uh, supposedly that is a gamma. Gamma supposedly, yeah. so we have the unit weight of the wall, so yeah, there is a special wall that is equal to 10 kilonewtons per cubic meter. Okay? So we have for the slab, for the steel beam, and for the special wall. So let's compute for the uniform dead load. So how, how to compute for the total uh, uniform dead load? 
So this uh, uniformly distributed load. So if we have a uniformly distributed load, that will be equal to by the weight of by the steel beam okay, plus uh, the weight of the concrete slab plus uh, the weight of those the special wall. Okay, summations of each uh, weight. All you have to do summation of gamma times area uniform uh, unit unit weight multiplied by the cross sectional area. So we'll be having the uniform uh, dead load is equal to what will be the weight of the beam? Uh, it has an area of 9,280. Unit weight of the steel beam is 77.3. Uh, uh, mind the unit, we have kilonewtons per cubic uh, meter. This is 9,280 square millimeters. So for, uh, we need to con convert this uh, unit. We have multiplied by... 1 square meter is to 1,000 millimeters screen. And it's for the steel beam. Then we have for the concrete slab. Unit weight of the concrete slab is equal to 23.6 kilonewtons per cubic meter. What is the cross-sectional area of the slab? It has a tributary width of 4 meters and a thickness of 0 0.125. 4 meters by 0 0.125 meter. Then lastly, we have the wall. On the dimension of the wall, it is 3 meters high with a thickness of 0.10 meter. Unit weight of the wall given, we have 10. This is 10 kilonewtons per cubic uh, meter. Cross-sectional area of the wall, we have 3 meters with a thickness of 0 0.10 meter. Alright, so let us compute for the uniform distributed uh, then the load that is to be carried by the, uh, by the, by the steel beam. We'll be having a uniform dead load of 15.51 uh, as uh, 17. If you are to observe the unit, cubic, uh, cubic meters, square meters, so this is now kilonewtons per meter. So if you are to draw the equivalent uh, free body diagram of this beam in terms of the dead load, carrying the dead load, computed dead load. So, for example, we have this uh, simple beam. So, this is we say simple beam. Okay, one end is a uh, pinch, the other is a uh, ruler. So, it carries a uniformly distributed load. So, uniform dead load equal to 15.5517 kilonewtons per meter. So, just the length is not given. Alright, so this is our first example. So this example is a, uh, let's say, complete, a complete floor uh, system. So from the given floor system, we have a column, let's say we have a column at A, column at D, column at E, then column at uh, H. So we, we have A and D are connected by a girder, the same with a uh, Columns E and H are connected by our girders. Then over those girders, we have these beams. Uh, beams AE, beam uh, BF, beam CG, and beam uh, DH. So take note that this uh, slab is a concrete slab. And we have uh, steel beams. We are using uh, steel beams and steel uh, girders. So required, compute the dead load carried by beam DH. Okay, the beam CG and the girder AD. 
Kung mapapansin nyo, as you can see, we have uh, AD is the same or similar to AH. Okay? AE is the same as BH. Beam BF is the same as CG. The cross-sectional area of the steel beams is 9,480 square millimeters and the gear is 33,740 square uh, millimeters. So, we are to compute for the dead load carried by the HCG and gear dirt AD. So, unahin natin yung uh, unahin natin tong C, CG. So, this is the same this is uh, the same our, our same solution for beam CG and beam uh, BF. So what is the cross section of the BF? So let's say this is okay, we need to consider its tributary width. What will be the tributary width or this one is the area carried by this a uh, beam? So we are to consider center to center uh, distance, or is the center to center distance of uh, its uh, nearby beams. So ito yung, kumbaga, it is a tributary with is the area of responsibility of member uh, CG. If we are to draw its corresponding uh, cross section, uh, what will be the equivalent tributary with the tributary with to be carried by beam CG and beam uh, CF? So this is the same, supposedly. I okay, so one half, that is 1.5, one half, 1.5. The same as 3 meters. So we have a tributary with B. Let's say we have 3 meters. What will be the thickness of this slab? So let's say the thickness of the slab. Okay, we have a thickness of 0 0.10 meter. So is it 0 0.10 from our, our reference? So let us check. For system 100 millimeters, so that is the thickness is 0 0.10 meter. So let's say this is a wide flange or an I beam. Alright, so we have a slab tributary width of 3 meters with a thickness of 100 mm or 0 0.10 meter. So CG and BF are a beams. They have a cross-sectional area, area equal to 9,480 square millimeters. So let us compute the weight to be carried by this uh, beam. So again, for beam CF and CG, let's say the label up muna dito, we have weight up to be carried by beam uh, CG equal to the weight carried by member uh, BF is equal to the unit weight times uh, the area. So summation of unit weight multiplied by the area. Okay, so we have the summation of unit weight times the area. So we have a okay, unahin natin yung steel. So what is the unit weight of steel? Again, from our uh, reference, the unit weight of concrete is equal to 23.6 kN per cubic uh, meter. And we have the unit weight of the steel is equal to 77.3 kN per cubic meter. Okay, so computing we have, that will be, unahin natin yung steel, that is 77.3, we have 77.3 kN per cubic a meter, multiplied by the given area this time, we have 9,480 square millimeters, this is divided by 1,000 square mm, a uh, 1,000 millimeters square, equivalent to 1 square meter. Then plus, uh, we are to consider the weight of the slab carried by the uh, beam. That will be plus 23.6 kilonewtons per cubic uh, meter multiplied by what is the cross sectional area? That is 3 meters plus uh, 3 meters times the thickness 0 0.10 meter. Okay, so computing for the unit weight of the dead load carried by member CG the same as the dead load carried by member of BF and is equal to
that will be equal to 7.81 7 uh, 3 kilonewtons per meter. So, yun yung dead load carried by these two beams, uh, CF and uh, BF, since they are identical. So, how about, uh, let us consider the next uh, member. Are we, uh, yes, so let us consider the member naman. Ito yung nasa gilid. These two, we have beams AE and beam uh, BH. So, for those two, So, for those two, what will be the uh, corresponding tributary weight to be carried by this uh, beam on uh, the edge, on the edge? So, we all have to just consider this as its corresponding tributary weight. So, it has a tributary weight half that will be the same as 1.5 uh, meters. If we are to draw its corresponding cross section, so, parang ito lang yung bubuhatin ng mga beam sa gilid, So this is again, this is a beam with a cross sectional area of 9,480 square millimeters. While for the slab carried by these beams on the on the edge, we have 1.5 meters as a tributary weight. So the same thickness, the thickness goes 0.110 meter. So let us compute for the equivalent weight carried by these uh, beams on edges. So we have the S. The weight carried by AE is equal to the weight carried by member BH. So that is equal to unit weight of steel, 77.3 kilonewtons per cubic meter. What is the cross-sectional area? We have 9,480 to be uh, divided by 1,000 squared. This is 1,000 uh, squared. What is the weight of the steel beam plus uh, the weight of the slab? We have this 23.6 multiplied by area, this 1.5 meters by thickness 0 of 10. So computing for the weight or the dead load carried by I we have the beam AE and the beam AD. You want to? So we have a, uh, this is 4.273 kilonewtons per cubic uh, per meter. Kilonewtons per meter, that's all. Since that is already a uniformly distributed uh, load. So we need to transfer this uh, loading to the girders. So the, uh, the load carried by these beams will be transferred, transferred to the, or transmitted to girders AD and uh, girder EH. So let us do the free body diagram for both beams. Ano ito? 7.813. So this will be the corresponding uh, free body diagram. Okay, the free body diagram for member uh, CG and member uh, BF. So they can, uh, for CG and BF, carries a uniform load of 7.813 kN per meter. For the extreme beams, we have A and B H 4.273 kilonewtons per meter. We need to determine the uh, the reactions on ends that will be uh, the load that will be trans transmitted to the uh, girders. So this is the same as the reaction at C. The reaction at C is the same as the reaction at a B. Or sa so bilang dulo naman on the other end. The reaction at F is the same as the reaction at uh, G. You can have it by free body diagram or by uh, statics. What will be the reaction at B that will be equal to the reaction at F? 
But since uh, symmetrical loading naman, pwede natin kunin yung total weight uh, divided by the two supports. So reaction at B and reaction at F, we have it is 7.813. Uh, I qualified by what is the length? What is the length of this beam? The length is equal to 7 meters divided by 7 divided by 2. So we have a uh, support reaction at B. I B R C. Actually, pareho lang din naman sa kabila. Ikaw to 27.34 uh, 3455 kilo. Yeah, so, pareho na rin actually dito. The reaction sa kabilang dulo, we have F. And the reaction at G is the same as 27.3455 kilo. Yeah, okay? All you have to do is, uniformly distributed. Okay, the uniform load times the length divided by two. Simply support. Simply supported beam or a simple beam. The next, about this one, what will be the reactions at about ends? So that will be the same as the reaction at A and equal lang yun naman dito sa reaction sa, sa D. On the other end of this beam A, E, and D, H, the reaction at E is the same as the reaction at H. So sometimes if you are designing a structure, kung may uh, symmetrical yung structure mo, if you have a symmetrical structure, it is easier for you to compute for the loadings, reactions, etc. Alright? So let us compute for the reaction at A, the same as the reaction at D, equal to? So the uniform load times the length. So the length is the same as 7 meters. We have 4.273 times a 7 divided by 2. So we'll be having a support reaction of 14.9555 kilonewtons. Pareho na rin yun sa reaction sa, uh, sa E and the reaction at uh, H. So you can check it by summation of moments. Bahala kayo kung ano yung procedure na gusto yung gamitin. The same as uh, 14.9555 kilonewtons. So those are, uh, these are the loads that will be transmitted to the girders AD at our girder EH. So let us draw the equivalent free body diagram. I will proceed to girder uh, AD. So girder AD. So, Gilder A did the same with uh, Gilder D H. They don't carry directly the slab. So, we should consider it's uh, self-weight uh, first. Yung kanyang cross-sectional area kanina is 33,740 square millimeters. It doesn't carry directly a slab. So, we have the equivalent uh, weight for member A D. Actually, the same lang sa kay member uh, E H. Will be equal to unit weight of steel 77.3. It's 77.3 multiplied by cross sectional area 33,740. This is divided by 1,000 square. Alright, so we have the uniform weight carried by AD, the same as the uniform weight carried by EH. Let's compute. Is equal to 2.60 uh, 8 kilonewtons per uh, meter. So all we have to do is uh, we are to add this uniform load to the transmitted weight, uh, transmitted weight from the beams. So let us draw the equivalent free body diagram of member AD. Alright, so we have 
For the other AD, the same with Gilder uh, EH. So it carries a uniform load. So we have a uniform load equal to 2.608 kilonewtons per meter. So we are to transfer, for example, that is for gear A, we will consider, oh, this is, let's say this is point B, and the next point is point uh, C. So what is the transferred weight to gear A AD from beam AE? Ano yung malilipat na weight kay A mula dito sa beam AE? Yun yung ating RA kanina. That is the same as a concentrated load, uh, 14.90, as na natin, 14.96. Okay, round ko lang, wala lang magkamdan ng space. So we have at point B, what will be the transferred weight? The transferred weight that is from beam BF, yung weight na to will be transferred at uh, girder at uh, AD. That is yung RB natin ganina, that is equal to 27. 27.35 uh, uh, BUC just to decimal places okay, 35 kilonewtons Then we have at point C Ano yan? That is the same as Dito? The same as 27.35 kilonewtons So this will be the Total load Total dead loads To be carried by uh, Gilder AD And lastly May nakalitaan Mayroon pa pala sa D we have uniform weight equal to 2.608 kilonewtons per uh, meter. And yung last load dito, what is the what is the weight from beam DH transferred at point D? So that is as on CRD, ito yun, is the same as 14.90 uh, 96 yung ko uh, I'll be using again just uh, two decimal places just to, map, to use the space. So that will be the equivalent. This will be the equivalent free body diagram of Girder AD. The same values of loadings for Girder EH. Alright? So all you have to do is compute for the reaction at A. A reaction at A for column A. And find the reaction for column D. And that will be our example for the red load for this. Floor system. Okay, so next example, Daya. Well, this is for the computation of live load to be carried by uh, structural uh, members. So, for example, we have this uh, floor system, the same floor system as our example from the computation of uh, live load. So this floor system is intended to be used as a residential floor area, so for a residential uh, building. Okay, so required, uh, determine the live load carried by beam CG, uh, beam AE, and girder uh, AD. So the same, I think the same main members that we discussed uh, last time or earlier from our previous example. So how do we compute for uh, the for the live loads, if it is a, a residential floor area. So on our NSCP 2015 and 20, uh, 2010, I think it's not going to So if we have a uh, residential area, so for residential area, the equivalent live load is equal to a 1.9 kilo pascals. So, if you are to check what is the live load for an office, for, for, for school, for garage, uh, any, for, for, the, for the specific purpose of that building, we have a corresponding value of a, a live load. So, for this a residential floor area, the live load will be equal to 1.9. So, again, how do we distribute this pressure load? As you can see, kilopascals. This is a 1.9 kilonewtons per square meter, same as kilo pascal. So how do we distribute this uh, pressure load to each of these uh, beams and uh, girders? So to determine the 
first uh, required, let's say this is for member CG, again, for uh, member CG and member uh, BF, they are similar or they are identical. All we have to do is consider their corresponding, uh, the corresponding uh, tributary area. All we have to do is uh, divide the floor area, that will be, let's say, the area of responsibility for this uh, beam. That is the area to be carried by a beam a CG. So again, that is the same as 3 uh, meters. So let's say you are computing for the uniform live load for member BF. That is the same as the uniform live load for member a CG. All we have to do is this uh, live load qualified by the tributary width, which is the same a B. So the tributary width is equal to 3 uh, meters. So we have a all you have to do is uh, make the unit, as you can see the unit is kilonewton per square meter. Gawin nyo lang siyang kilonewton per meter. So we have the uniform load to be carried by BF and the uniform load, line load, to be carried by member CG is we have 1.9 kilonewtons per square meter multiplied by the tributary mean which is 3 meters. So answer yung meter, we'll be having a value of so we have 1.9 times 3, so this is equal to 5 point, we have 5.7 kilonewtons per meter. That will be the uniform live load to be carried by these two beams. Okay. Then we have for member uh, AE, all we have to do is consider the midpoint between beam BF and CF. So this will be the corresponding tributary mid for uh, beam AE and this is uh, 1.5 uh, meters all right so for members for members uh, AE and uh, DH so we have that is the uniform light load carried by member AE is equal to the uniform light load carried by member uh, DH is equal to I have a live load multiplied by the tributary uh, wind. So we have a live load of 1 point. Uh, this is 1.9 kilonewtons per square meter. Multiplied by the tributary wind, 1.5 meters. So what is the new meter? I'll be having this 1.9 multiplied by uh, 1.5. So this is equal to is equal to 2.80 uh, 5 kilonewtons per meter so if you are not to do the or to analyze the equivalent free body diagram of the of these uh, four beams okay, so we have the uniform load for member BF and C this will be 5.7 uh, kilonewtons uh, per meter so we have the other end, or the two ends, we have to compute the supports. This is the reaction at B is the same as the reaction at uh, C on this end, or uh, at girder, uh, on this girders A2, uh, girder A2, uh, D. So pareho lang din naman yun, on the other end, that is the reaction for girder F, or at point F in girder EH, and the reaction at uh, G. So if we are to compute for this value, the reaction at B is equal to the reaction at C. So that is equal to. Are you made the summation of moments or? Ah, yeah, summation of moments to determine those reactions. Summation the three equations of equilibrium. So we have that is uh, five point seven multiplied by what is the length of this beam? We have seven uh, meters by three point divided by two. So we are having the, that reaction to be 19.95 kilo newtons. Then, okay, so let us consider yung mga uh, outer or outer beams, uh, A, E, N, uh, D, H. The uniform load is equal to 2.85. So the reaction on this uh, point, this is the reaction at A is the same as the reaction at uh, D. So, the reaction for this beam AE and for beam DH, yung reaction sa mga points na yan, 
We have the same. On the other end, that is for Gibner EH naman. So, the same lang naman dito sa kabila. You have the reaction at E is the same as the reaction at uh, H. So, let's compute for those values. RA is equal to uh, RD. Uh, that will be 2.85 times symmetrical loading. Uh, ginagawa ko lang dito is uh, the uniform load times the length divided by 2. That will be the reactions since uniformly distributed load simply supported. So 2.85 times 7 uh, divided by uh, 2. So this is uh, 7 meters. So we have this is a uh, 9.975 kilo newtons. So if you are not to transfer those uh, loadings dito sa girder A to B Okay, so this time we don't have a uniform load since I tapos na yung mga dead loads kanina So we are just computing for the live load from the beams transmitted to the girders uh, For this time, a uh, girder A to D So we have, what is the transmitted live load at point A? That is your uh, RA We have that value as 9 point This is now an uh, a concentrated load, we have 9.975 kilo newtons. That is, at point B, what is the completed reaction at point B? That is from the beam uh, BF. That is, we have another point load or concentrated load is equal to 19.95 kilo newtons. Then you have the same lang dito, the reaction at C, that is, the weight transferred to this point from B, uh, CG, is equal to the same as 19.95 kilonewtons. And the last we have, this is uh, the transferred uh, weight from beam DH to column D. That is uh, the same as 9.975 kilonewtons. So that will be the equivalent free body uh, loadings from the beams. Carrying this slab to uh, give their AD. So, why is it that we have a different, uh, or why is it that the computation of live load and dead, and live load and dead load is uh, done separately? That is because we have uh, sa some specifications from our NSCP, that is the load combinations. If we are dealing with dead loads and live loads, you need to determine the equivalent uh, ultimate load that is the load combination of the two so again if you are dealing with live load and dead load so the latest one is the 1.2 of the dead load plus 1.6 of the uh, live load so this is the ultimate uh, loading you need to consider load combination because there are cases now obviously for a structure is carrying those loading at the same time with an additional uh, let's say additional but factors 1.2 and 0.6 in addition to the magnitude of those two loadings. Right, so that is our example for uh, the computation of live load.